and welcome to Nana's Crafty Home. My name is Tanya. Today's tutorial is going to show you how to complete the single crochet spike stitch. This stitch is uh, the next tutorial in my stitch series for the Autumn Rhapsody blanket pattern. That is a free pattern that you can find on my website. I will have a link provided below in the description for you if you'd like to learn more about that. For my supplies today, I am using some scraps that I had left over from my blanket of the Paint Box Cotton Erin yarns. And uh, you can see here I am using the Soft Fudge as well as the um, Melon Sorbet here for contrasting colors. I also am using a size H Clover crochet hook, a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. So just a note, uh, I am making this stitch tutorial so that you can take this stitch to multitude of different projects. So I am giving you the stitch multiples that you would need to make other projects as well. If you are specifically using it for my Autumn bl uh, Rhapsody blanket pattern, uh, you will need to refer to the written instructions uh, to verify the stitches before and after the repeats of each row um, because they are not specific to that written pattern. So to get started with this stitch, I'm going to go ahead and chain 31. And uh, that chain represents multiples of 7 plus 2 plus 1 for the foundation chain. Now, a note I will make that uh, if you're taking this stitch elsewhere to other projects and you're wanting to make a different design than I did with your stitches, a different stitch pattern, you may need to change up your multiples uh, depending on what your repeat ends up being. With 31 chains on our hook, I'm going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each chain across. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm going to be making four rows of single crochet and that's going to be the base before I start my spike stitches because I need uh, those rows in order to spike down and uh, crochet into them. So just go ahead and single crochet in each chain to the end of the row. Now that I've worked a single crochet in every chain for row two I'm going to turn chain one and single crochet at the base of that chain and in each stitch. And I'm going to repeat that row two more times after this. So I'm going to have a total of four rows of single crochet before I begin my spike stitches. All right. So once you have four rows of single crochet and we're ready to start row five, bring in your contrasting color, color B and turn and chain one, single crochet in that same stitch at the base of that chain one, single crochet in the next stitch. I'm ready to start my spike stitches. So in the pattern it indicates spike two, SP2, and that's telling me that I need to spike my single crochet down into a different row, the second row down. So what is the second row down? So the row that you're currently working, the stitch that you would normally be working in is row one. You would drop down another row for row two. So what that's telling me is instead of working in that next stitch, I wanna drop another row down to work my next single crochet. Now, if you've never worked spike stitches before, and you want to make sure that you're working in the right area. I've worked two stitches already in this row. I'm going to be working my third stitch. So coming down, I'm going to check to see where is that third stitch in that second row below. So there's my first, there's my second, there's my third. Now, where am I working that single crochet? it's between those two single crochet stitches. So I'm dropping down and placing my single crochet in between those stitches. So inserting your hook in between, pulling up a loop, and when you pull up your loop, make sure that your loop is even with the loop on your hook, and then complete your single crochet. 
Now my next stitch is a spike three. So I'm going to drop one more row down into that next stitch. So in between these two single crochets here, skipping the one that's up above, inserting my hook down below, and pulling up a loop just like I do for my single crochets. And I'm gonna pull up a nice tall loop, even with the loop that's on my hook, and finish my single crochet. Now I'm working a spike four. So I'm dropping down another row into the next stitch over. And I'm going to insert my hook in between those two single crochets and pull up a loop. Again, a nice tall loop even with my hook and finish my single crochet. I'm going to come back up because the next stitch is a spike three. So I'm coming up another row, coming over one stitch, working in between those two single crochet stitches, pulling up a nice tall loop again, finishing my single crochet. Spike two is my next stitch. I'm coming up one row over one stitch in between those two single crochets, finishing my single crochet. So I finished my spike stitches for that repeat, but I have, I'm going to be working a single crochet in the next two stitches. So there's my first one and my second one. And now I'm going to repeat that same sequence again of spiking down two, three, four, three, two. Doing that same sequence again. So dropping down one row below where I would typically work. Three, dropping down one row over one stitch. Pulling up a nice tall loop. Spike four, down another row, one stitch over, pulling up a nice tall loop, finishing my single crochet. Spike three, one row up, one stitch over, spike two in the next stitch, up one row, over one stitch, single crochet. Single crochet one in the next two stitches. So you can see this pattern that this is creating by working these spike stitches, shifting over, by shifting down a row, over one stitch, working in between the single crochets in those lower rows creating this really interesting look. So I'm going to repeat again and then single crochet in the last two stitches and I finish that row. And that is all there is to it. So to continue on, uh, if you were going to be making more rows of spike stitches, you would continue on either changing back to your color A and doing four rows of that color and then coming back in with your color B to do your spike stitches, or uh, you could continue on uh, with your rows of single crochet in um, color B and then do your spike stitches back in this color A. So there's all kinds of things that you can do to change up the look of the stitches that you're doing. Um, so it's really as simple as that. You can see here that I've worked multiple rows of single crochet in between working a row of spike stitches. I have uh, worked this in two different colors going back and forth between color A and color B. And uh, what has made this interesting almost eyelash appearance is I've come through uh, on the subsequent rows of the spike stitches and I've made sure that that spike four or that deepest spike stitch 
is coming down into the middle of the two single crochets in between each of the sets of uh, spike stitches. And so that creates this really interesting and appealing look to these stitches. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial today. Thank you so much for being with me. As always, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. You can also email me at nanascraftyhome at gmail.com. I'm happy to help in any way if you have any questions. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you get notified whenever I post a new video. Take care, everyone. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.